bring in John, 97.3 ESPN.com, covers the NFL. Our NFL news and notes brought to you by BMW of Atlantic City. The ultimate driving experience is closer than you think at BMW of Atlantic City.com. Just off exit 37 on the Garden State Parkway. John's got a piece up now at 97.3 ESPN.com uh, suggesting that uh, one Vinny Curry has a little bit of a reason why his season wasn't so very good last year, John. And um, would this be a viable excuse for the Vinny Curry uh, down year? I'm, you know, I'm kind of torn on that because if you look back before week one uh, against the Cleveland Browns, he was on the injury re- report with a, with a knee injury. Uh, and he claims it was an L- MCL that hampered him throughout the season. Uh, but then I got to week three and he was off it by then. So, uh, I, you know, if you're an organization like the Eagles and you have a medical staff and a guy's struggling with a knee injury and you're putting them out there week after week after week uh, for 16 weeks, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So uh, I'm sure it hampered him for a while, but to use that as the reason uh, he had a disappointing season, uh, I'm not sure I can buy that completely. Yeah, I mean, the MCL is an interesting one because we've seen, you know, a guy like Jaleel Okafor who had hampered his whole season. We just saw Jaleel, uh, Joel Embiid uh, miss the, the final portion of the year uh, because of that injury. And here's a guy who's saying, well, that's the problem I had. That MCL, sometimes it gets so diminished as, eh, it's not that big of a deal because so many guys do play through it. Yeah, and, and clearly when you're not, as I said, when you're not on the injury report, it you know, that – is it a, a clear indication that the medical staff doesn't think it's a significant issue. Now, uh, generally, if you have a, a higher grade MCL strain, that's going to keep you out for a number of weeks. Uh, probably, you know, a four to six week scenario is, is the best case in that type of instance. And none of this happened with Vinny. He was consistently up each and every week. Uh, but he didn't perform as expected. And as I said, at least early on, I'm sure that contributed to it. The question is, did it contribute for the entire 16 weeks of the season? And if it did, well, then I I think you got to point to the Eagles and and the coaching staff and the medical people, and maybe this guy shouldn't have been out on the field. Yeah, Uh, we'll get your – you know, gut feeling on their opinion of what his role will be moving forward. Because it seems like a crowded house over there, but yet he does make a lot of money still. So are they going to overlook that and kind of push him to the, you know, you could conceivably say he'd be your third guy if you're if you're looking at Long and Barnett ahead of him? Yeah, right now, I mean, he would project as the third man of the rotation. I think that could change. Uh, I think there's a chance that, Vinny could be a starter opposite Brandon Graham. I think in that case, you would have Vinny playing the left end. Brandon would flip over to the right end uh, because I think he's more comfortable doing it. Uh, and then you have sort of Chris Long and, and, and Derek Barnett mixing in. So I think that's a possibility. Uh, but right now, as you go into the offseason work, uh, and we'll get to see practice for the first time tomorrow, I would imagine that Brand is going to line up at left end and probably Chris Long is going to start at right end, and, and we'll see. You know, things can change. Uh, as I often point out, at this time last year, the starters were Vinnie Curry and Connor Barwin, and, and Brandon just completely outplayed both of them, and he ultimately uh, was the starter. Yeah, you know, I think uh, that area, you know, the OTAs begin tomorrow, by the way. We'll have uh, full coverage of that. Ten OTAs in total starting tomorrow. I think one area that will be pretty cool uh, to watch is that defensive end spot with Long and Curry. And, of course, anytime you have the number one uh, first-round pick in that uh, mix, that's going to be one of high interest. But to see how the Eagles – And don't forget Elijah Qualls, too. I mean, that's a guy a lot of people don't think about. But uh, on the defensive line, don't forget about – Elijah Qualls and what he can bring to the table. He's six one. He's three hundred twenty one pounds, Mike. Oh, defensive tackle. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about different positions. You said end, but I'm I'm just going right down the line. Yeah. All right. Thank you. 
<laughs> yeah, Lies is going to be on the interior. And, you know, but defensive end is it's one of the deeper spots on this team. We just mentioned the top four guys. But even that, you have Stephen Means, uh, who was on the 53-man roster last year. Uh, you have Alex McAllister coming back. He was a draft choice that they kind of stashed on injured reserve, so he'll be back uh, in fighting for a position. And obviously Marcus Smith, uh, we all know uh, as a disappointment, but still has been a part of this team for a number of years. So, and, and, you know, you might have seven NFL caliber bodies at that particular position at, at both right and left defensive end. And that's that's right there would say the interior offensive line is as one of the deepest parts of this team. John McMullen with us here on 97.3 ESPN. So how about those tackles since I'm so eager to get to them and talk to them with the Benny Logan loss and Bo Allen hurt? How do you see the defensive tackle position shaping up? Well, I think it's similar to last season in that you're very, very comfortable with the starters and you do lack some depth, and there are guys who are going to have to step up, whether it's, as you mentioned, Elijah Qualls, Qualls who's a six-round pick. You have Destiny Vallejo, who's a, uh, a second-year player that was an undrafted free agent. Uh, so there's not a lot of proven uh, commodities behind Fletcher Cox and Tim Jernigan, but I, I think when you're talking about the starters, as long as you're healthy, those are two pretty good players, and uh, you're going to consider that a strength of the team. Uh, obviously, the Bo Allen injury hurt with the torn pack. We'll see how quickly he can get back, but that would help the depth a lot. It's still tight at the linebacker position, John. Is there anyone you see that can uh, – and light at the linebacker position. Is there anyone you see that could uh, step up there and make a difference? Well, I, I think as you've seen, uh, not just in Philadelphia, but around the NFL as a whole, uh, because of the sort of uh, elevation and, and, and the, uh, the more spread offenses around the league, there's, there's this emphasis to try to spread defenses out. So, you know, traditionally we talk about a 4-3 defense, we talk about three linebackers, but in the reality of today's NFL, only two of them are starters, or two of them get starter snaps. So the Eagles are fine there with Jordan Hicks and Nigel Bradham. Although you have to, there's still a concern over some of the off the field issues because Nigel has a trial set for, I believe, in July, and he could be facing some serious consequences stemming from that fight at the Miami Hotel the last off season. And and you have to keep a, a close eye on that. It's another position, though, where the Eagles lack some depth. I still think ultimately they're going to move on from Michael Kendricks. They're going to try to trade him. Uh, and some of these young guys have to step up. Uh, Joe Walker from last year coming off a torn ACL. Nate uh, Gary from this year, a draft choice, uh, who played safety in college and sort of fits into what I was just describing, sort of that hybrid player that can play linebacker, can cover uh, safety. Who knows? He might be able to get on the field. Uh, but it, it, you're, you're fine. It's a lot like defensive tackle. You're fine as long as the starters are on the field. Uh, but if you have to get – you have to play somebody other than Jordan Hicks or Nigel Pratham, you're going to start to have a little concern. Yeah, and, uh, you know, as you mentioned, John, a lot of times, you know, Michael Kendricks is a guy who's quote-unquote a starter but is rarely on the field because so few teams are putting linebackers out there. And you wonder if Kendricks, you know, uh, is it, does he have a battle with a guy like not, you know, uh, the kid from Nebraska? What's his name? Uh, Gary. Gary. Yeah. Nathan Gary. Yeah, I, I, well, I, I think a lot of it depends on if he's here. I mean, that's number one. I think the Eagles have been trying to move him. They'd love to move him. They'd love to dump that salary on somebody else. Uh, I think if they can't, he, he, he is a good football player. Uh, I mean, I know he's frustrating at times, but it would be hard to imagine uh, a kid trying to move from safety at college uh, to linebacker in the pros if he could – go out and beat out Michael Kendricks. I don't think that would be capable. Uh, I think in Kendricks' case, it's 
uh, sort of a square peg in a round hole. I, I don't think Jim Schwartz thinks he's a fit for his scheme. Uh, and and I I think as I said the organization would like to move on from him, but not necessarily because he's a bad football player. I just don't think he's a great fit. Right, not a good fit here. Um, we're talking with John McMullen, ninety-seven three ESPN dot com. Our NFL news and notes. Taking a look around Eagles OTAs, which open tomorrow. Looking on the defensive side of the ball, uh, we we kind of have been bouncing around uh, from the line out to the linebackers, and we know the one area that everybody's oh, kind of looking secondary. forward to is specifically corner. They have their two starters at safety, that we know. But that corner spot, you're going to see, uh, you know, probably one of the biggest competitions on the team. Yeah, unquestionably. And, again, it's really a theme, uh, the lack of depth at certain positions on the defense besides defensive end is an issue. Uh, and, obviously, it continues at the cornerback position. And when we mention only two linebackers being on the field, that means three corners have to be on the field. Or you have to get inventive, as the Eagles have been in prior years, sort of uh, when they're in their big nickel, they'll, they'll put Mac, Malcolm Jenkins in the slot, uh, maybe put Jalen Watkins back at safety uh, and use two corners because they haven't had the talent. It uh, looks like we got a little problem with John's phone today. The weather is causing havoc with that everybody's cell service. still serving. falling. He was sounding great all the way up until that. In fact, J- uh, Jalen Watkins was a guy I wanted to ask him about because they have a lot of corners and safeties, Mike Gill. And you, you, there, I guess you try to find guys that are flexible and can play multiple positions, so to speak, or sort of flex between corner and then safety in certain packages. Yeah, Watkins, uh, uh, you know, him and J- uh, Jalen Mills, the two Jalens, are, mm-hmm. are two guys uh, who are kind of interesting guys to keep an eye on. They, they seem, John, uh, and you would know this, uh, you know, they seem to like Jalen Mills and what's Jalen Watkins' role this year? Yeah, that's what I was saying if I was breaking up. Sort of the Eagles have used that big nickel in the and the pass where Malcolm will come down and play the slot in their nickel defense and Jalen Watkins will enter at safety. That's always a possibility. I think the one thing we have to keep an eye on very closely is the health of Patrick Robinson. He's not a, I don't think people are very excited uh, because of his history of injuries or uh, his disappointing year with the Colts, but uh, that's the guy they're counting on. I mean, he's a veteran corner who, when he has been able to play, he's played effectively in the past. And I think if he's out there, I think all of a sudden you create some competition at the other corner spot between Jalen Mills, as you mentioned, and and Rasul Douglas, and and that helps because uh, you generally get better if people are pushing you. But I, I look at this team and I say, you know, rather than have the three corners on the field, which would be Robinson, Mills, and Douglas, I think we're going to have another year uh, of Malcolm Jenkins playing a lot of slots just because they're better uh, when they do that and, and put a Jalen Watkins, or it could be a Terrence Brooks, for that matter, in at safety. John, if you assume that Sidney Jones goes on the IRR or maybe the PUP uh, with the designation for 8 to 12 weeks, the, what's your ex- expectation then? of the cornerback depth chart to look like outside of Mills and Brooks? Well, you're generally going to keep five, at least five, and possibly six on certain teams, but I couldn't imagine the Eagles keeping six with the current bodies they have uh, until Sidney Jones is back uh, because they just don't have enough depth or talent. And I'm not sure – if Ron Brooks is going to make this team, first of all, he's coming off uh, a real serious injury, so we have to see when he's healthy uh, to begin with. Uh, and that's a concern. And then everybody else, you know, you have former CFL players like Aaron Rimes and who, who showed a, a little bit in preseason last year. You have Dwayne Gratz, who was once a third-round pick in this league but has never really developed. Uh, so the cornerback depth chart is not good, and it's it remains uh, when you look at this team as a whole. That would be the one position that it, that I would imagine is everybody's first concern because there's just not 
a lot of NFL level talent at that particular position. Yeah, the defensive side of the ball should be very intriguing. There's uh, competition at uh, end. We've also seen the corners, and then of course uh, the the light uh, talent that they have at the linebacker spot. The OTAs all begin tomorrow, and those are three spots. You have the number uh, first round pick on the defensive end, uh, you know, defensive line. Mm-hmm. You've got a, a third round pick with uh, Rasul Douglas in that secondary there. So uh, two key guys on uh, this year's team. Uh, competing starting tomorrow, uh, and the competition begins tomorrow. The OTAs are really the first uh, step into those training camp battles to see if you can catch Doug Peterson and Jim Schwartz's eye, and uh, we'll be intrigued by uh, what happens tomorrow and this week at the Eagles OTA. Tomorrow we'll take a deeper look at the offensive side of the ball, and John, of course, the Eagles uh, at OTAs beginning tomorrow. Uh, On the defense, real quick, uh, do you think this is a better – defense personnel wise than the one that Jim Schwartz had last year well it's largely the same if you think about it uh, up front uh, you have the big change from from Benny Logan to Tim Jernigan I think that's a positive uh, as I mentioned they've they've upped the depth at defensive end hopefully Derek Barnett gets on the field as quickly as possible uh, big concerns, linebackers, Hicks and Bradham, it's going to be the same. It's going to be the same at safety with Jenkins and McLeod, uh, and that's fine. Uh, those are two high-level players. Uh, the issue is corner. Uh, and obviously, Rasul Douglas brings length and size and ball skills, and you would have to think he's going to play better, e- even as a rookie, than a Le- Leotis McKelvin or Nolan Carroll, who didn't play well last year. And I think you expect improvement from a second-year player. I think Jalen Mills will be better. How much better? I'm not sure. But at least on paper, you see a a slight improvement. However, you have to be concerned about the depth. If there's any injuries outside of defensive end, you're going to be really, really concerned. All right. Uh, we'll have more on the Eagles as they begin OTAs tomorrow here on the Sports Bash. Don't forget, follow John on Twitter at J.F. McMullen and uh, check out all his national NFL columns over at FanRag Sports NFL. And uh, check out that piece on Vinnie Curry over on our website, 973ESPN.com. Thanks, John. Hey, thank you, guys.